in something like digital citizenship? Well, uh, it really starts because I use online tools a lot in my everyday work. Um, you know, I use all kinds of social networking, I use internet, email, and so I see how important digital citizenship and netiquette um, is. So I just wanted to um, you know, have a discussion with you about what you think digital citizenship is and um, how we can all be good digital citizens. So I found it really interesting that the average American, uh, maybe some of you have seen these statistics as well, the average American spends nearly a third of his or her leisure time online. So on your weekends, if you're going to go on Facebook or if you're going to be chatting with your friends, and you're spending a third of your leisure time online, it's probably easy to imagine. But that's not counting all the time that people spend online when they're at work or at school. So almost everyone is online these days. Raise your hand if you would say you get on the internet uh, at least once a day. I see yeah. a lot of raised hands. Okay, raise your hand if you would uh, if, if you are on any social networks like Facebook, MySpace, etc. I see some raised hands. Pretty much everybody. Okay, uh, raise your hand if you use the internet uh, when you're doing your homework or when you're doing research. Okay, I see a lot of raised hands. So it seems like for a lot of different things, whether it's talking with their friends or even doing homework, then we're online. So that's great because it means that most of your friends are online, but it also means that your parents are online, <laughs> and your school administrators may be online, and uh, the cops are online. You know, there's really all areas of society, and um, probably the cops are online because there are even online games online. Um, this one says, Criminal gangs are making millions of dollars out of the H1N1 flu pandemic, such from a while ago, but uh, by selling fake flu drugs over the internet, a web security firm said on Monday. So, as you can see from all these examples of who's online, it's not just you and your friends, it's pretty much everybody. So when you post something online, it can be seen by your friends, your parents, your teacher, your principal, creepy people, Russian gangsters, the guy who will be interviewing you for a job in 10 years, and maybe even your future husband or wife. So the internet is uh, definitely, it, whatever you post on the internet, it definitely shared to a really wide audience. So I think we can agree that you want them to be seeing good things, like uh, this picture of me smiling as I walk down the street not this picture of me just looking weird. So who you are online is just as important to your future as who you are in person. So why do you think that posting things online, um, why, why is this important to your future? Why wouldn't I want to post something like this on Facebook? I don't know. Okay, well, um, let's say that, so you have, you have your Facebook account, you've uploaded, I don't know how many pictures, thousands of photos, and uh, 20 years from now, you're getting interviewed for a prestigious job, and before they hire you, the firm decides to just do a, a normal check, you know, they go and they search your name on the internet to make sure nothing bad comes up, uh, to make sure you haven't, you know, gotten into any scandals or something, and then this picture pops up and they look at it and they think, Oh, that's weird, I wonder what this is, and they must be further. It might not cost you the job, but definitely what you post online now can be found uh, many years later. And you, you might just say, well, if I post something online, I can take it down later. Uh, what do you think about that? If I post this online and I take it down, uh, what do you think would happen? I'm sorry? Okay. Uh, yeah, they could probably still find it later. So how, how you say they could probably still find it later, how would they find it? Online, you could look it up. Online, you could look it up. So let's say I post this on Facebook. Uh, then I decide it's not great for my image, so I decide, you know, I'm going to take this down. The problem is, is that uh, somebody might have looked at this, said LOL, downloaded it, saved it to their computer, and uh, then post it on their Facebook tagging me. Someone else could have downloaded it. You see how people can easily you know, download photos, save it if they think it's funny. So if you have a photo that you post, you might not necessarily have the only copy, and someone else might post it. It might exist on their computer. 
So how do you use the web as a social, academic, and career tool without putting yourself in a danger or ruining your reputation? How do you guys use the internet, and, and do you take any measures to make sure that you know, you're not going to be uh, ruining your reputation or, or getting in danger? What are some of the things that you do? I don't care. You don't care? Okay, that's good to know. What, uh, does anybody? Okay, so for instance, um, let's talk about Facebook. Um, when, you, when you post something, have you ever noticed like privacy measures on the side? Okay, so yeah. for instance, uh, my older sister, she uses these quite a bit. If there's a post that she doesn't want me to see, she will put uh, everyone <laughs> except for uh, my little sister. So yeah, there's um, people will use those privacy things in different ways. Some um, people like my sister use it to keep uh, their little sisters from seeing their wall posts. But other people use them so that uh, just random people can't see everything. Uh, on their profile or on their wall. So it's a good idea to take some measures uh, just to make sure that if someone's just randomly looking you up, they can't find your phone number and your home address and all that kind of information uh, that, that your friends, that you might be okay with your friends knowing, but probably not with just anyone on Facebook. So if, uh, let's say that somebody asks you for a friend request, they say, uh, hey, I know you from school, I think, or something. So you see the picture, um, and, and it's uh, these people having fun on a beach, and you see the name, and it might be a little familiar, you're not really sure, uh, and they say they know you from school. So do, do you accept this friend request or not? Yes. Yes, yeah, I hear I a yes, okay. Any no's? Yeah. No. Yes. We have some no's. Yeah. No? Okay, so why, why might you not accept this person's friend request? <coughs> well, if I knew the person was, I'd accept them. If I knew who the person was, you'd accept them? Okay, so you, let's say that you can't really think of an image of this person right off the top of your head. You're not sure. There's probably an Ava somewhere in your school, but you're not totally sure. They say that they know you from school, and the picture is of a bunch of teenagers. So, uh, what do you think? I'd probably look to see who it was, like, on their profile, too. Okay, you want to see who it was, you might look at their profile. So, uh, this person doesn't have a whole lot on their profile. It looks like they're kind of new to Facebook. So, let's say that you decide to, since they say they know you from school, and who knows, there's, you, you might know them, then you decide to accept their friend request, as some of you have been saying. Now, what if it turns out to be this guy, instead of a bunch of cool teenagers? You know, there's, it's really easy to just set up a Facebook account, and um, you know, say that you were born in 1994, say that you go to this high school or that high school, and this is a picture I got off the internet of teenagers. So it's pretty easy to write something like, hey, I know you from school, have this fake picture, have a fake name, and add someone as a friend. So you want to, be, you want to make sure, do I really know this person? If you actually know this person, you've walked by them in the hallways, or you know who they are, and you can clarify with them, hey, thanks for friending me on Facebook in person, then it's okay. But if it's someone who you, you're, you think might go to your school, but you don't really know, you've never seen them before, then obviously that would be a warning sign. So, uh, you want to make sure that if someone friends you, then uh, to do a little bit of investigative work. And for that matter, the uh, profile could be that of your mom trying to keep an eye on you. A little less likely, but still possible. So if you don't know a person in real life, you probably know not to make friends with him or her on the web. And then also think before you go out personal information such as your real name, your home address, or even your email. Because a lot of people, uh, you know, Facebook asks for information, right? So you might put down your address, you might put down your email just automatically, but then that becomes visible. And unless you change certain settings, it can be visible to everyone, or even uh, friends of your friends. So, you want to make sure, am I okay with certain information being out there? Read privacy statements before sharing your information. I know those privacy statements are boring, but you want to scan through them and make sure there's nothing uh, that, that you're not aware of. Read the fine print, 
and tell a trusted adult someone online is making you uncomfortable. So all this seems like uh, pretty obvious stuff. This one's probably the most obvious one. Don't post your phone number or home address on your blog or profile. There are two things that are most important not to post, probably phone number and home address, because those are really easy ways of reaching people. So, uh, yeah, because you can, let's say you put your email online and someone is sending you like threatening messages or something, you can always change an email address. It's a pain, but you can change an email address. A home address, it's harder to say, Mom, Dad, can we move? Because, you know what, I posted our home address online and now there's creeps who are uh, looking at this, you know, that's obviously a whole lot harder to justify. So, yeah, um, phone number, home address. But you guys are probably, what, what do you post online uh, when you're blogging or Facebooking or uh, tweeting? Uh, then what, what is the information that you post and what's the information you don't? I'm sorry? Videos. Videos? Okay, so you post videos. Uh, and do you get, by the way, with videos, do you get people's permission um, before you post them? Like if you have a bunch of people in the video, do you ask them, is it okay if I post this, or do you just go ahead and upload it? I just go ahead and upload it. Go ahead and upload it, okay. So, yeah, that's another thing. Videos. Uh, if, if you're going to be like, okay, so let's say you go to someone's house, you go to a party, and you're playing this awesome video game, and some person has this really uh, cool look and see you uh, start doing video, and then you post that, well, if that person finds out, and if they're really mad because uh, they don't want a video to be posted, maybe their family is in the witness protection program, okay, that one's a little less likely, but it's possible, then uh, they might uh, take issue with that, and you might just take it down. So most of the time when you're doing video of your friends, and if they see you with a video camera um, out, then it should be okay. But if you're just doing video and they might not notice that you're doing it, you might want to, before you upload it, just um, you know text them or email them, hey, I'm going to post this video with you in it. Is that okay? So, uh, so what else do you post? Aside from videos, do you post, um, I don't know, what, where you're going or what you're doing? I usually post some random funny stuff. I post oh wait, random okay. funny stuff. Yeah, that's sort of similar <laughs> to what I do. Yeah, I don't really um, post that often, but when I do, it's usually jokes. Uh, what else? What else do you post? Pictures of friends or videos of friends hanging out. Okay, so you might make plans with new friends, like, hey, we should hang out on Saturday. Do you want to go to, uh, I don't know, where, where do you guys go to hang out? Uh, party. Walmart. <laughs> friends though. Um, maybe you've, I don't know if any of you have had this experience, but what if some of your friends jump in and say, hey, can we come and hang out too? And you suddenly have a group of 10 people that want to come and hang out with you at Walmart. So when you post things that are public to your friends, even you might get unintended consequences. Let's say you just really wanted to go with one person, and now you've got this whole group that's planning on meeting, and uh, has made this whole detailed thing. So when you post things, uh, just be aware of the consequences. Even if it's within a group of friends, uh, things can happen that you maybe weren't uh, looking to happen. So, it basically comes down to common sense. Don't post things like your age, school, location, email address, phone number, schedule. What I mean by schedule is, if it's visible to everyone, don't say something like, Hey, this upcoming Saturday, my family is going to be gone on a weekend trip, but our house will be completely empty, okay? Because... <laughs> Obviously, that is, uh, you know, why, why might you not want to post something like that? Because you might come back and be wrecked. Yeah, you might come back and, and look around and think, has someone broken in? Because, uh, and obviously, you post things like this, most of the time, your house should be okay. But for every single time that your house isn't okay, that's a whole lot of uh, stress and 
um, you know, that's, that's a huge issue to deal with. So you want to play it on the safe side and make sure that you don't say things like, my house is going to be empty for the whole weekend because you're going to be gone on a trip. Um, when you say things like that, obviously, it'll uh, get on some people's radar. Specific plans or personal photographs. Um, personal photographs, what I mean by this is uh, you don't want to have, um, and, and some people are more cautious about this than others, but well, if you if you go to your family reunion and you take this giant picture and it has all of your cousins, your um, all of your family, all of your grandparents, um, maybe maybe your little cousins who are five and seven, their parents really don't want pictures of them to be on the internet yet, uh, and maybe you, maybe your parents don't want too many pictures of you to be online either. So it really depends based on what your family's okay with. But generally, you don't want personal photographs to be visible to everyone. You want them to be visible just to friends or uh, family members. And I think that in Facebook, there's new privacy controls that you can do that with. So all these things are uh, good to keep in mind and make sure, again, that you use common sense. If I post this online, am I okay with the whole world seeing it is a good question to ask. But of course, I'm making the web sound like it's entirely populated. Uh, by creepy predators, swine flu, vaccine, faking gangsters, and angry parents, which is not true um, of the entire internet. I mean, you find all kinds of people on the internet. The internet really reflects our world. There's good places and bad places, and if you learn to follow basic safety rules and learn how to spot tricksters, and the internet can provide amazing photographs, source documents like journal entries and letters, and treasure troves of accurate information, as well as obviously being able to chat with your friends. So the web can be an amazing learning resource. How do you guys use the web? So some of you use it for your homework and when you're researching. How do you use it? Do you go to certain sites? Do you type in your search engine? What do you do? Hey, so everything. Everything? Okay, so Let's say you have a research paper, a 12-page research paper to write about the uh, feeding habits of South American bats. Where do you go first? Okay, so you go to Google. Uh, you start going to Google. Then, then what do you do? So why don't we, um, I'm going to actually open up Google, and let's have this imaginary uh, paper that we have to write. You won't see me here for a second because um, I'll have disappeared. Okay, so go to Google. What do you type in? What do you type in? So, so the assignment is on the feeding habits of bats in South America. Uh, I just made that up. We can just do it. Feeding habits of bats. Uh, they don't have to be so So, in Google, what's what are the words you type in? Feeding habits of bats. Okay, feeding habits of bats. Fair enough. Uh, since that's what you're supposed to be writing out. So, feeding habits of bats. Okay? So, the first things that come up, uh, we can take a look at them. This is the Encyclopedia Smithsonian. So, the first thing you want to do is look at the website to make sure that it's a trustworthy source. And also, you want to look at the website to make sure it's not, you know, a spam website that's going to download virus on your computer or something like that. So, uh, we can observe what the website is. It's www.si.edu um, is the main website. So, what do we know about .edu websites? It's educational. They're educational. Okay. So specifically, who um, who uses .edu domains? A teacher. Okay. It might be a teacher. Generally. You find .edu's with uh, universities and colleges. You find them also on some uh, high schools and um, at public schools. But a lot of times you'll find it on a college. So Encyclopedia Smithsonian Bat Fact, we see that it's a .edu. Uh, so we know that it's probably, it's probably going to be an open source. And it's also from the Smithsonian. Uh, anyone know what the Smithsonian is? Museum. Yeah, it's, it's the National Health Museum. So, um, and they're very well respected. So we can tell that their bat facts are probably going to be um, trustworthy. So, uh, information research assistance regarding bats is frequently impressed from the Smithsonian Institution. Here's this up open. Okay, so here's this big article about bats, and it's uh, pretty well organized. So it says, what are they? Where are they? When did they appear? How do they fly? What do they eat? So this is the area that we want to pay attention to. When you're reading, 
If you don't want to know a whole lot about bats, you can skip the stuff that's not really relevant to your paper and just read this part, what do they eat, and then you can um, put that into your research. Uh, you, may, you might copy that, put it into a Word document, put quotes around it so that you remember that you're quoting the article. And then what you probably want to do is you don't want to take this whole big piece and quote it exactly into your research paper. You might want to read it, understand it, and paraphrase it or uh, state it in your own words, and then cite this website um, as one that you got the information from. So it's pretty easy to find uh, a trustworthy source. Let's go down. Here's another .edu one. Um, and here is a .com one, the wildclassroom.com. So .com websites, you want to sometimes be aware that they're not always accurate because anyone can buy a .com. I can go to a domain registrar, and I can say, I want to buy BatsAreAwesome.com, and I am going to write all kinds of fake information about bats just to see if anybody will fall for it. Well, uh, all about, or bats are awesome gets on the Google, and some poor person researching for their paper clicks on that website, finds all this fake information. So you see how .com websites can be. Uh, it's really easy to fake them. But another thing to be aware of, not so much when you're researching bats, but when you're researching political issues, for instance, um, and then you'll find that if it's a controversial topic, you'll find a lot of prejudice or bias sometimes on websites that are easy to buy. Okay, so um, when you look at this, just be aware of what are the websites. Are they .com, are they .org, or are they .edu? And um, know how to evaluate them. So just as some places in the world you uh, you know are good places to go, um, like for instance, if you um, you like to hang out at Walmart, you know that Walmart is where you like to go. Then there's some places on the web that are trustworthy that you know you can get good information from. So for instance, PBS or the Library of Congress. These are good places because they can provide fairly unbiased uh, and, and large amounts of information. So websites created by organizations or people that are unfamiliar to you are more questionable. If you've never heard of the organization that created the website, or you've never heard of these people, and it's a, and it's a domain like .org.com that's easy to buy, then you want to do some investigation. Obviously, there are lots of awesome websites out there that are created by people who will be unfamiliar with you, but it just means that you want to uh, make sure that they're trustworthy. So, what's your experience surfing the web? Have you ever come, up, come upon a fake website or a, um, a website that was maybe biased? What's your experience? Never. Never? Okay, that's good. Uh, now, what does your school have some rules as far as what websites you can use and what websites you can't? Yeah, they're blocked. Yeah, they're blocked. Yeah, they're blocked. That's an email. Okay, so you can't use blogs as far as like citing for information in a, in a paper? Yeah. Okay, um, what about Wikipedia? Wikipedia work. Yeah, work. Wikipedia, okay, so you are allowed to cite Wikipedia. Okay. Um, so, well, why, why do you think your school might not want you to be uh, taking information on blogs or citing blogs? Is they might have bad stuff on them. They might have bad stuff on them. Yeah, but um, even, <coughs> even if you go to, um, let's say you go to my blog, and you're thinking, hey, Doris Fee Talk is awesome. Okay, uh, maybe you don't think that, but uh, you think a Doris Fee Talk's blog uh, will probably be reliable because she seems um, like she might know about, uh, I don't know, bats. Okay, let's say you think that I might know something about bats. So you go to my blog, adorasb.blogspot.com, uh, and you'll find that what I know about bats will, might, you might find a story that I've written about bats, or you might find a poem, but you probably won't find information. Or let's say that you're researching a political issue and you go to my blog, what you'll find is my commentary, my opinion on those issues. You're not going to find uh, the news story. If you want facts and if you want objective or not biased uh, reports about political issues or uh, news stories, then you don't want to go to my blog because I usually write my opinion. 
So that's uh, one reason why you might not want to go to blogs, is that they're usually, usually people set up blogs to write their opinion. Uh, or they're often pretty personal, like for instance people might write about their trip and it's designed for their family to read more than the rest of the world. So uh, yeah, the blogs are definitely um, not, not designed for citing and research so much. But um, you, can still, you can still find valuable information on blogs, it's just a question of verifying it. Um, what about, let's see, just as some people create um, hoax profiles for nefarious purposes, other people will create hoax websites. So I want you to take a look at a couple of websites. So I want you to take a look at a couple of websites and tell me what do you think? Is it a hoax website? Is it true? Um, so we're going to start with this one called uh, Boilerplate. And have your teacher play today all volleyball players to say this coffee today before you leave. All volleyball players to say this coffee today before you leave. All volleyball players are getting a lot of announcements. Okay, so let's take a look at um, this website. It's called Boilerplate as Soldier. So what do you think this website is about? Soldiers. Soldiers, uh, more specifically, looking at this image, what, what is this thing over here? Robot. It's, yeah, it's a sort of robot. It looks like a weird kind of, really uh, metallic kind of early looking robot. So, uh, and, and this is what the website is about. It says, Boilerplate is Soldier, the mechanical man, participated in most of the conflicts of its age, either as observer or as combatant. 1898, the Spanish-American War. Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders charge up San Juan Hill behind the Buffalo Soldiers and Boilerplate. So Boilerplate is shown here in a photo with Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, here's the Japanese-Russian War, uh, and here is Boilerplate. Um, the punitive expedition against Pancho Villa, here is Boilerplate again with Pancho Villa, uh, Mexican Revolutionary. And 1918, World War I, 25 years after it was created, to end human casualties in combat, boilerplate vanishes during the war to end all wars. So, uh, lots of like boilerplate souvenirs and boilerplate images. So, what do you think about this website? Well, one thing that you can do. So, let's say you're reading about this and you think, man, this would be an amazing paper I could write about what this um, boilerplate mechanical man, how many. Uh, battles he was in, and look at all these amazing photos. I can make an awesome slideshow or a presentation. Uh, so, um, in order, but you're you're a good researcher. So, in order to verify your source, you want to do a little investigating. So, I'm going to walk over here to the keyboard, and um, I'm going to start by maybe uh, taking off parts of the website. And the reason that I would backspace a little bit is I can go see what BigRedHair.com is, since I was the uh, since that's the thing that's under. So if I go to bigredhair.com, then it'll be this, um, this, well, big red hair, and it says comics, robots, uh, and it's, uh, Paul Greenan's robots and Anina Bennett's comics. So what does that tell you about the boilerplate index of um, all the photos and stuff? Might not be true. Yeah, uh, because firstly, when you go to when you go to the boilerplate website, a few things should alert you. Um, first, if the, if it looks a little bit, um, if it sounds too good or too weird to be true, it might be uh, a robot being in all these wars throughout history and having a photo of this robot by Teddy Roosevelt. You know that looks pretty cool, but it can be done on Photoshop. So. Be sure to always investigate. Check out what the website is, uh, what it does, and uh, also really um, see what other people have written about it. Because if you search boilerplate in Google and scroll down a little bit, you'll probably find that some people have written about it being a hoax and stuff like that. So yeah, always remember to check out your source. Now why do you think people might create a hoax website? Why do you think people would create a hoax website, like the boilerplate ones? It's fun to look at, but some people might be convinced by it. Why might someone create a hoax website? For a 
to be funny as a joke. Uh, yeah, that's all very possible. Um, what are some other other things? <coughs> well, there's certain hoax websites that are set up to try to actually make you believe in false information for a purpose. So um, a lot of as in a lot of, uh, like there's white supremacist groups which have created websites that are distributing false information. Um, there's uh, obviously lots of uh, extremist groups. There's all kinds of, um, and even political groups um, are all, you really see hoax websites or at the very least false websites or websites that have misleading information coming really from all over. Some of them are just for jokes. Some of them are to be uh, We have Matt Hill, Club fans. Uh, you are even in Mr. Laster's room with Miss Griffiths. No one should leave early. We'll be watching that whole park lot, especially around the sign. Do not leave early. You'll be in trouble. Uh, but at this time, if you've got a dollar, I'm going to go to Matt Hill Day events. Go to the gym. Otherwise, be in Mr. Laster's room with Miss Griffiths. Thank you. So you see websites with false or misleading information coming really from all kinds of different um, now, if, and you also will... Good morning to wish Bobby Valentine a happy birthday from Sam Lansky and Matthew Watt. Happy birthday, Bobby. Is your school usually, does your school usually have this many announcements or is it just... Uh, Not just... normally, this is unusual. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I was wondering, because I've heard some announcements come on during this, is a, this is definitely a record. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just when you're surfing the web, you're looking for examples. There are lots of awesome websites out there like the Smithsonian uh, Institution. has lots of stuff on bats, for instance, and that would be a good trustworthy source. But you'll find others that might not be so um, qualified. People, You might find a website where a third grader has written uh, what I know about bats, and it's very basic. Everything there might be true, but it's not really in-depth. Or you might find an article which is written by a bunch of college professors which is just so up there that you can't understand it. So you want to make sure that you're able to find the papers or the um, websites that fit your needs the, the best. Very okay. uh, So before you use information from a website and a school project, make sure that website is reputable. And if a web organization is unfamiliar to you, try typing the name of the organization into a search engine and seeing what comes up. And the same trick works for web authors. If you find an interesting article on the web, then just type the author's name in the search engine and see what information you can find on the author. So if someone claims to be a renowned historian who's written 10 books, and you search their name and you can't find any of their books, and you can't find any information about them, Brandon then Morgan, please, please, Brandon Morgan. So let's practice with one example. Uh, I'm doing, or I'm trying to learn about the food of Durango, Mexico, uh, Mexico's Wild West. Um, and I come across this article, so I'm starting to read. And I just want to make sure that it's a trustworthy source because I've never been on this MexConnect website before, and I want to make sure the author really knows what they're talking about. So first I might notice that their name has a link by it, so I can click on that link and see what the bio says on the website. Then there's a picture and it says, Senior Food Editor for MexConnect. Emma Williams, come to the office please, Emma Williams. <laughs> uh, and I see that she's written food and travel articles, is the author of some books. So if I'm really suspicious and I don't really take, take her for her word, I can go to Google or your search engine of choice and search in Karen Hirsch Graber, and I find uh, the first two are Mexconnect, but then I can also find, I see on Amazon her book, The Cuisine of Puebla, I see a review of her book, um, so yeah, I, I can understand, you know, this is someone who has written some books, who's gotten the book review, um, all of that. So, uh, if, if you look at a, um, if you look at a web author's name, and you want to find out more about them, then you can just investigate by searching their name and seeing if they've written books or written other articles and stuff like that. Okay, so here are rules of thumb. Using the internet for research. Choose a good search engine. Narrow your search, uh, search trusted reference sites. So, for instance, uh, you're doing your research paper on bats. And if you just go to Google and you search bats, 
you'll get all kinds of information. You'll get information about bats in South America and bats in North America and uh, diseases striking bats and bats in the news and uh, bat poop and what bats uh, are famous for and bats in history and in stories. And so in order to really get the results that you want, you want to narrow it. You want to search something specific like bat feeding habits or what bats eat or something like that. And you could even go narrower than that. Uh, it's a lot like when you're writing a research paper, you don't want to write about a super huge topic like the world, you want to narrow it down to politics of North America or something like that. So you want to do the same thing with when you're on a search engine. Investigate authors that you don't know about. If you're not quite sure if an author is trustworthy, just search their name, see what they've written, see what their famous work. And then investigate the website by looking at the domain name, about us section, uh, searching if anyone has written things about it uh, on the web. So these are things that you can do just to verify that your sources are okay. Your online presence can help you or haunt you. What are ways that your online presence might help you? Well, getting you a job, yeah. A lot of people use the internet to look for jobs. You find a lot of, uh, you, you, by going online you can find where to get a job, what jobs are open, and you can apply for jobs, you can get tips on how to build your resume, so definitely getting a job, that can be helpful. What else can you do using the web? Make a career out of it. I'm sorry? Make a career out of it. Make a career out of it. Yeah, a lot of people are very successful as website designers or uh, as um, tech specialists. So a lot of people do uh, are able to build careers using the, the web. Um, and then right now, obviously, a lot of you will use the web for your homework, uh, and you use the web to talk with friends. So your online presence um, can be very helpful. In fact, there are many examples of people who have uh, built careers out of doing something on the web. Uh, this person uh, made, got a movie made out of it. I don't know if any of you have watched the movie Julie and Julia, but it started because someone started writing a blog about her uh, project of trying to work through Julia Child's cookbook. And uh, people started reading the blog and a movie was made. So uh, obviously things that you do, uh, writing blogs or being on Facebook, some of these things can have 